Hi friends, welcome to CEO Check-In. And if you were with me at the fifth annual Million Dollar Women's Summit last week, thank you for joining us. We had so much fun. We had hundreds of women from across the country joining us to learn from keynotes and presenters and network with each other. It was incredibly joyful and everyone, I think, got a lot of takeaways and things they could use right away to scale up their business. If you weren't there, we'll be still posting about it and you'll have an opportunity to join us in our new membership site that we announced at the summit. We launched the Million Dollar Women Community which is our first ever membership site. And we're so excited. It's gonna be at first just for our masterclass grads and current members, and then we're gonna open it up to the general public. So stay tuned. Um, it couldn't be better timing for having my guest on today, David Meerman Scott. He's a friend, a speaker, an author of 12 books, an entrepreneur, an investor, and just wrote a book, well, recently wrote a book with his daughter, Reiko Scott, and it's called Fanocracy. And it teaches you how to turn customers into fans and fans into customers. So I wanna learn from him since we're launching Million Dollar Women Community, and I had the pleasure of having him on my podcast a few months ago, which you can listen to at my website, juliapimsler.com. Just go to Go Big Now and then drop down. It says podcast there. He has a great episode. So uh, we're not going to repeat the things we talked about. We may touch on a few, but I'm excited to go deeper into some of these topics with David. He's a marketing expert. He's a huge supporter of small businesses and entrepreneurs, and we're so delighted to have him with us. So David, before I bring you on, I always do a Go Big tip. And today my Go Big tip is to trade selling for serving. This is one of the best things you can do for your business, is to get rid of the idea that you are selling to your customers and in fact, focus on serving them. It's one of the main things we teach in the Sales Cure, my sales program, and it makes a huge difference in your attitude towards selling. When you're selling to people, you can sometimes feel out of integrity or like you're trying to get them to do something they don't wanna do or convincing them of something. When you're serving people, you're figuring out, hey, what's their problem? How can I help with that problem? Am I the right one to help with that problem? And suddenly, sales calls and sales meetings go from being a win-lose situation to just finding out what the person's struggling with and can I help with that? And if I can, great, we're a fit, let's work together. And if not, let me help you find someone who can help you or you can come back when you are ready to solve that problem or when you do need my help. This has been a game changer for so many women in our community. And if you wanna learn more about it, go watch the free video at sales-cure.com and feel free to get in touch with us. We're also doing a sales workshop very soon on May 18th. It's gonna be open to the general public because you cannot take the sale out of scale. You can't scale up your business without learning how to sell. So that's one of the key things we teach in our community. All right, I wanna bring on David because I know we're gonna run out of time. There's always such great things to talk about with him. So let's go. Scott, can't wait to see you again. The internet is working its magic. There we go. Hi, hey, how's how are we going? doing, Julia? I'm doing great, how are you today? Doing great, good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, I'm just turning up my volumes. I couldn't hear you 100%, but there we go. Last That's time I saw you was when we did that podcast together. I know, always fun to be with you in whichever medium it might be. <laughs> well, thank you for your flexibility. I know you may not do a whole bunch of Instagram lives. Is this your first Instagram live uh, or no? It is my first Instagram live and you're right. I haven't done this before, but cool. You know, let's, let's go for it. I am always interested in experimenting. Well, I'm thrilled to be able to be the first Instagram live. We're gonna just keep this real casual and fun. Um, I'd love to start with you just sharing why you decided to write a book about how to turn customers into fans and fans into customers. Yeah, so I wrote a book um, uh, back in 2007 called The New Rules of Marketing and PR. It took off, it was a really popular book. It's now in the seventh edition. Um, and it became a bestseller. Um, it's in 30 other, it's in 30 languages. So, um, but the problem that I was noticing is that so many people and organizations were doing what you just talked about. They're selling, selling, selling. And I also noticed that the social networks themselves 
were um, incredibly polarizing, pushing people into buckets. And yes. this was this is dangerous. I believe the Facebook algorithm is the most um, dangerous thing ever invented. I truly. Well, there's do. a whole documentary about that now, right? I'm sure yeah. you saw that. What was it called? The social dilemma or something? I believe. I, yeah, exactly. And I yeah. so I totally believe that um, that the algorithms from Facebook are destructive to humanity. And at the same time, I'm a massive fan of live music, as you may see behind me, my live music wall of fame. Oh, I love um, it. I've been to 804 live concerts, although sadly nothing since um, the beginning of last year because of COVID. Yeah. And, and I, I think I said, 700 or so of those were the Grateful Dead. No, only, 70, <laughs> only 75 Grateful Dead concerts. Only not, not, not very okay. many. You would have uh, liked that though, <laughs> if 700 of them were, were the Grateful Dead. That would be interesting. Uh, so I decided actually to talk to my, I was talking to my daughter, Reiko, she's now 28, so, but this was five years ago, about what she's a fan of. And I mean, I knew, but you know, she's a massive K-pop fan. She's a Harry Potter fan. And we just started riffing about how on one hand, the social networks are polarizing and online is, is a cesspit in many ways. Um, however, when you're a fan of something, you know, you, you smile, it's exciting, it's super cool. So um, Reiko and I decided to write this book together, which became, um, as you kindly mentioned, Fanocracy, turning fans into customers and customers into fans. Um, and we dug into the neuroscience aspect. And it turns out that, um, that there's actually, um, it's rooted in our brains, why we become a fan of something. And it's what you've been able to build with your community, Julia. It's like-minded people. And it turns out we're hardwired as humans to want to be part of a tribe of like-minded people because that's when we feel safe and secure and comfortable. It goes back tens of thousands of years um, to as, as a survival technique. It's like a basic human need, right? It's like, a basic to feel, human I mean, aren't we need. pack animals? I've read that before, that humans, we don't think of ourselves as like wolves, but we dogs that we feel most secure in a pack. We, well, we want, definitely want to be part of a tribe of like-minded people. So what we're trying to do is develop that tribe of people. So if you're thinking about how to grow your business by growing fans, it's doing what you're doing, Julia. It's bringing people together. It's providing value. It's not selling being helpful, but then people very much want to be part of a group of people who are just like them. Like I love going to a Grateful Dead show. The music's great, of course, but I love it because I'm with people who are just like me. I can turn to someone even if I never met them and have a conversation. Well, and then sometimes it can lead to incredible business relationships too. I hope you don't mind Absolutely. if I tell your story. I love your story. Yeah. Um, and I made you tell it on the podcast, so I'll tell it real quick. That when, sure. when David went to meet with Brian Halligan, am I saying, yeah. saying his name right? Uh, the founder of HubSpot, some five or seven years ago? No, what? it was 2007. It was 14 years ago. Oh, wow. 14 years ago. Yeah. So you showed up with your laptop and you opened it up and there were all these stickers on it. And he was like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Before we even start this meeting, what's this one? What's that one? And it turned out that you had all these uncanny things in common. You were very yeah. passionate about Japan, Nantucket, um, and of course, the Grateful Dead, you wound up then going to a Grateful Dead concert together. This led in part to, you know, why he invited you to be on his board. You've been yeah, that's active exactly board right. member, right, of HubSpot, which is now one of the most successful media marketing companies. And it's a great reminder that when we're public about what we care about, it attracts other people, certainly if they share that passion, but even any kind of passion. Like when I reread your chapter one, which you so generously give for free on your website of Fanocracy. So if people want to read chapter one of Fanocracy, go to davidmearmanscott.com and you tell the story of you and, and Reiko comparing notes, but your interests couldn't be more different, right? Yeah, no, it's exactly right. No, it's, ex it's exactly right. And, um, and you know, just, just, Brian, I'm on Brian's advisory board, not his board of directors. Oh, thank you for coming. Um, and, you know, it, it was so interesting because um, Reiko and I really studied hard um, about fandom and we really dug in deep. We spoke with hundreds of people about what they're a fan of. And people are a fan of a sports team they love. They're a fan of a sport they love to play. Um, they're fans of their hobby, whether that's bird watching, whatever it is. They're fans of a product or a service. Um, Scuba diving. People, I'm a big scuba diver. There you go, scuba diving, and I'm surfing. 
Um, yeah, that's right. That's I, I even have a surfboard that I made right over here in the in the corner. Oh my god, um, that you made! Wow, I cool. made that surfboard. Yeah, um, that's amazing. and so um, so the one of the most surprising things we learned in researching fandom was what you just mentioned: the importance of passion, because. When we share what we're passionate about, whatever it might be, if you share that you're passionate about scuba diving, it means that you're a more well-rounded person. You're someone who is attractive to others simply because you love life and you love the things you love, even if they don't share your passion for scuba diving. It's well, yeah, still... you and I had dinner one night with some friends at, at the National Speakers Association. I remember you telling me about your passion for Nassau and like all the things you collect. And I know nothing about that, but it was so yeah. fun hearing yeah. you describe it all. I got like caught up in it. Now I look out for NASA things and, and think of uh -huh. you. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm such a geek about um, the Apollo Lunar Program. And, you know, I just, I grew up with it. You know, I'm, I'm of that age, I grew up with it. And um, I thought well, it was the, most, you know. the coolest <laughs> thing in the world when I was in elementary school was that we were actually going to the moon. Oh my God, that's crazy. And I, I still maintain that excitement even to this day. Well, I thought uh, of you when the drone took the little flight I on know, Mars. The little yeah, helicopter. last week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I want to, you know, bring this around to business because, sure. you know, I'm sure women are watching and some men thinking, okay, well, how do I apply this to my small business? Because I think the limiting belief, to use my mindset terms, yeah. can be, well, I get if I'm a big company with a big marketing budget, how I might do that. But, you know, my marketing team is me, right? Yeah. And I'm just doing Google AdWords. Like, how could I possibly turn my customers into fans? So what are a couple of things people can actually do that, that make a difference around that? Absolutely. So the first thing is, um, and this is part of what you led with before you even brought me on to the show, is the idea that, you know, it's not about selling. You know, it's not about always talking about your own stuff. It's about providing value. And one of the things that I love to talk about is this idea of the more you give to the universe, the more the universe gives back to you in good things. And I think that's so true. It's been true in my life. Many other people have said it. it's true in their life as well, that if you're providing um, things that are interesting, you're providing things that are valuable, you're being kind, you're being generous, that is a way to build fans, um, not just trying to sell, not just trying to yes. focus on you and what you're all about. But instead, and you gave some of examples of that in the book. Maybe you could share one of the companies that you highlighted. Because that's one thing I loved about Fanocracy. It was so practical and tactical. Oh, it, thank you. That's yeah, really, really love um, that. So I'll give you a couple examples. So one from the book is um, this company called Duracell. They do batteries. And Duracell, um, during the pandemic, has given away over 10 million batteries to first responders and healthcare organizations. Uh, batteries, number one, were scarce, and also batteries are expensive. And, and many first responders, like you know, EMTs and fire departments, uh, hospitals, actually were losing revenue for a variety of reasons. So Duracell gave away over 10 million um, batteries to um, first responders and people in need. It's part of their Power Forward program that's been going on for many years to help pe people who are victim of natural disasters. And people love this. It's completely free, no obligation um, at all. Batteries, they, you know, they don't ask you to fill out a form or anything. It's like, here's your batteries. Here's your, what do you need? I need double A's. Here you go. How many do you want? And, um, and that's super cool. Um, I, wrote, actually, cool. I actually wrote a blog post today, as a matter of fact, um, uh, about this very concept. And I shared another example from a company called Skillsoft. They're a B2B company, so a little bit different. Um, but they did a, a, a very extensive research report on what's, what they're calling the pink pandemic. And it's the challenge that women have been more adversely affected because of the pandemic than yes. men. Yes, also called the she session sometimes, right? Okay, I haven't heard that term. Yeah. But they use the term pink pandemic because um, more women have lost their jobs than men. Um, and, and many times that that sometimes became voluntary because women had to take care of the children 
So they couldn't maintain the job. And they actually found that this was true all over the world. They did research in Australia and, and in Europe and in, and in yes. Asia as well. We've been following this closely, as you can imagine, yeah. in our community. And many of us were affected as well. Abso absolutely. So they did this really um, extensive report. But Skillsoft is in the, um, uh, the corporate online learning um, space. So they actually made some of their courses available completely for free um, and courses about um, uh, that, that are helpful to women who are in this situation as well, by the way, as men who need to understand the situation better. Uh, so that's this idea of giving gifts, no expecta expectation of anything in return, uh, give things away. That's a way uh, to create fans out of your way customers. To, Are way there sort of like fans. three things one could do? Like that would be one, right? Give things away. And funny enough, even in our community, we have like a chocolate company and I was doing a lot of live coaching in the early days of the pandemic right here on this medium to women who were, you know, freaking out, all their revenue had gone away overnight. And yeah. one woman with the chocolate company was like, no one's ordering chocolate. I've got a luxury chocolate line. And I said, well, why don't you give them away to first responders or have right. people have the option of buying chocolate for first responders. Right. And she did that and it took off. And I was just on her website two days ago. She's still doing it. So that oh, can happen cool. at a micro level too. You don't Super need to be Duracell. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can happen at a micro level. It can happen in a local level. Um, you know, if if you're running, I don't know, a local restaurant or local, sure. some, you know, something it happened in a local level as well. Um, so you asked for three. Yeah, three, three things. Ideas. So one would be, yeah, like create one, goodwill one, by giving the, things away. But yeah, some small so business which, owners are listening thinking, yeah, I can't do that yet. <laughs> well, I think everybody can because mm -hmm. everybody can think of something to give away. And it That's doesn't true. mean it doesn't mean you have to give away your product. Correct. Uh, it could it be a free download. It could be a PDF. It could be a like, free download, a free PDF. Yes. You could do um, uh, if you have a particular skill set, you could do what you're doing right now. Create um, a uh, an Instagram live or a podcast. Well, you or... inspired me to do something. I'm so happy. And then let's come back to this. I'm not trying to get us off topic. But um, when we did our podcast and you talked about writing your book with Rayco, I, I was like very jealous. I was like, uh -huh. wait, I want to write a book with my kids. That sounds so fun. And my kids were only like, I don't know, 13 and 10 at the time. Yeah. But we decided to write an ebook together inspired okay. by you and Rayco. It's called Million Dollar Moms, How to Raise Confident Kids as a CEO Mom. And so I wrote part and they wrote part. I wrote parenting tips and then they wrote like, yeah, that one didn't really work. Don't do that one. <laughs> uh, that's so great. I love it. And it's a free download on my website. So exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't sell it. It's just something so people can get to know me and maybe, you know, help with their parenting. No, that's so thank awesome. you for that gift, David. I, I I'm love, glad I got a chance I, yeah, to tell I, you that. I, I love that. That's awesome. Uh, I, another thing that I do that, that I'm, I think every single person who's listening in can absolutely do is, um, is I pop into um, classes, um, no, no charge. Uh, mm -hmm. So many um, universities use my books in class. So uh, many times the professors will reach out and say, hey, I'm using your book in class. Uh, the students really love it. Thanks a lot. And I'll say, hey, I'm happy to jump in for 20 minutes. Pop oh, they must class, love that. Pop into class, ask, and answer a couple of questions. And they do. The professors love it. The students love it. And, you know, everyone here has a skill that you could teach. And, and you know, the students at every age, you know, elementary school, middle school, high school, university, postgraduate, doesn't matter. Students at every level, you know, it's this whole Zoom fatigue. Part of the Zoom fatigue is the same instructor on that screen all the time. So, Having someone else pop in, ooh, look. Right, it's easier there. than ever now. You don't have to get on a plane or anything, right? And we, all, and we all have a skill. We all have an expertise. We all have something yes. that would be interesting to people that you can pop in. So, I agree. So, so what's, the third, what's the third thing? What's the third thing people could do? That would be another idea. Well, we talked a little bit about this um, earlier, but um, I'm hugely... Um, uh, I think it's hugely important to to be passionate about what you do. Um, so we talked about that, but I I, th I just want to emphasize it because it was the thing that Reiko and I found to be the most surprising. You know, we we didn't go into this idea of fandom and how to grow fans, thinking that 
just being passionate about the way you live your life is going to help, but it does, you know? Well, well, how can people put that into action? Because I noticed that in my community, a lot of women are like, oh, I don't want to put myself out there. It feels like it's, it's self-aggrandizing or being vain. And so how do you put your passion out there in a way that's really serving your community and not, you know, oh, look at me? Um, so the real thing to be thinking about here is, um, is to share the things that you're passionate about on your social networks or in your work or, you know, we, you talked earlier about just having, I just have a sticker of the things I love on my computer. But, um, you know, here's the thing that I think um, uh, sort of sums up this idea for me is that many people have a huge brick wall between their personal life. Woohoo, I'm having fun in my personal life. And their business life, <laughs> <laughs> where everything is serious. And what this means is that many people have LinkedIn as their business life and Facebook and Instagram as their personal life. So what works um, to get this idea of passion is to break down that brick wall, break down the brick wall of what's your business life and what's your personal life and just live a life and share the different aspects of your life with um, the people that you encounter. And, um, and, and, and that works wonders for so many people. I, I, I'm reminded of, um, of, uh, of some of my friends who have done this in such a great way. One, one of them is Rebecca Keat. And Beck is a triathlon coach. And she's a coach of this really super cool. It's the, the number one woman, um, women owned and coached triathlon club in the entire world. Oh my God, also, amazing. And is that her job? Yeah, or amazing. Is that yeah, yeah, just yeah, her yeah. passion or well, both? It's, it, well, it's her passion and her job um, and her entrepreneurial spirit. You know, she, uh, she's, uh, she would fit right into your community. Um, she um, she's, awesome. um, she, Beck is from Australia. She now lives in, in Colorado. She retired from being a, um, a professional triathlete about four or five years ago. And she, what am I going to do now? I'm a professional triathlete for 20 years. So she started doing this coaching program and it's taken off. Uh, and she's doing really, really well with it. But what I was getting to is that she's also incredibly passionate about saving horses. Mm. Um, I mean, she is big time into saving horses. It turns out that many horses are slaughtered for um, uh, you know, for use as um, uh, animal food and, and other reasons. And she's that. actually in the process of trying to change some laws in this country around, uh, around how horses are treated. And she also has a, um, a personal um, place that she started where she saves horses. I think she's up to 25 or something. Wow. And, and so the money that she makes from her triathlon business goes back into saving horses, but she doesn't keep those things separate. Everyone who knows her as a coach and who um, is a customer of her coaching practice also knows that she loves horses and that, um, you know, m much of her money gets plowed back into horses. They set up a 503C um, uh, nonprofit organization also around that. So um, she's somebody who's I think, has done a fabulous job at um, being a woman entrepreneur but also sharing her, the passion for what she loves outside of her work, that makes her a more interesting person. It makes people want to do business with her or in other words, become part of her triathlon club. That's a great example. And we also know from you know, Sales 101 that people like to buy from people they know, like, and trust, right? Absolutely. And how yeah. do you become like a, a real person to people if you don't share who you really are? And it's funny, when you were telling the Rebecca example, I was thinking how when I got inspired by you to create my ebook, Million Dollar Moms, I did have a thought, David, of like, why am I even going to bother doing this? Like, yeah. this doesn't feed my business. It's not yeah. going to like make me more money or get me more clients. But I'm passionate about, you know, a certain kind of mothering that is about helping kids to become more independent, right. you know, right. being confident. And so I just wrote it for fun. And it was fun to do a project with my kids. And to be honest, I don't even track what it brings in. But I do feel like it helps me to be a more full person to put that out there because, yeah. I think one reason a lot of women leave corporate America and become entrepreneurs is that they get tired of not being able to show up as their full self in corporate America. They feel like they have to show up with 
you know, the 80s version of the shoulder pads, whatever that is now, right? Like, I am an uber professional. Yeah, I'm right. Like, well, I'm also a mom and, you know, I also love yeah, scuba yeah. diving. Or That's right. And, and I think that that's what people are looking for, especially, you know, the tribe that you serve, people who are, who are running their own businesses, CEOs. Um, uh, you know, we want to see your passion. We want to know what gets you excited. We want to know um, that you're someone who would be fun to be around. Well, thank you for sharing all that. This is so helpful. And we only have a couple more minutes, but I would love to get some advice from you since I have you all to myself here. So <laughs> we are launching this Million Dollar Women community site. And I think like so many women business owners are making pivots, you know, partly due to the yeah. pandemic. Yep. Like for years, we thought maybe we should have a more affordable offering for people who want to be part of Million Dollar Women. But we were so busy running our program that we never did anything. And then with the pandemic, we realized so many women women need help. We're not serving as many people as we could. So we've launched this membership site, but you, we are addressing the very thing we need to get right, which is how do we help our customers see what we're passionate about, why they should join our community and become raving fans. So what advice would you give to us? And then I'm sure it will be applicable to so many people watching who are also pivoting, launching new things, figuring out how to get their customers excited about their new offerings. I think we talked a little bit about this concept earlier, the idea of what can you give away to people before they're ready to um, become a member? You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that I see as, I mean, I don't know if I want to call it a mistake, but one of the things that I see often with membership sites is that um, the membership sites are sold with a lot of hype. You know, it's like, all you have to do is spend, you know, whatever the price is, $29.99 a month or $500 a year, whatever the price is. And you become a member and members can get this and this and this and this and this. And how exciting is that? Um, but what they what a lot of membership sites don't do is provide something of value for free, provide something of value with no registration required, provide mm -hmm. something of value that gets people to be interested to be part of a tribe with no cost. And then they, th they might think, oh, now I get it. Now I can see the value of being a member. So that, in other words, you don't have to sell your, your membership program. People can see the value. And, when, and I mentioned Rebecca Keat a couple of moments ago, Team Serious Tri Club. Um, what she does is she makes a lot of, of very valuable content available for free. And she knows that many of her tribe are beginner triathletes. They're not professionals. They're not people who already know everything that they, they need to know to how to be a great athlete. They're people who are brand new. You know, they're people who said, geez, COVID, what the heck am I going to do now? Oh, maybe I should try triathlon. How am I going to do that? Oh, look, here's a club. Maybe I can join it. So they give, give away a ton of free information that you don't need to pay for. Like how to train for your first triathlon. How yeah, there's all sorts. Things like that. Yeah, thing, things I like love that. that. So yeah. it, could be a, it could be like a free little course. It could be like an ebook. It could Absolutely. be just something of value. Some, so things, people realize. Things of value. Yes. Then people then who, in her case, say, oh, okay, that's cool. Now I feel a little more comfortable jumping into the world of triathlon. Then they think, okay, now I need to join a club. Now I need more education. Now I need more. And now I need to know how to transition from, from swimming to bike, you know, and all of the nuances. And there's a lot with, I'm I love that. Plus but... when they learn about her passion for helping horses, right. Then she becomes a more complex real person yeah. to, to them and yeah. people buy from people they know, like, and trust. Yeah. Right. So that helps with that. Plus we just learned at the summit a few days ago from one of our keynotes um, who is Cameron Cruz. She runs our Riveter, which is a multi-million oh, cool. dollar bag company. You know, they won on Shark Tank. They're doing great. But but it's a social venture in the sense that they hire military spouses yep. and put a lot of money back into that community. And she said studies show that people will spend up to 50% more for a product or service where they know that it's benefiting someone, where it has, does like a social oh, good. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. another reason, yeah, right? So, and I, I hadn't even thought of that with, in the case of Rebecca, for example, the social good that much of, not all, but much of her profit goes back into the whole Well, yeah, you have courses. to pick between two coaches, right? Why not pick? the one who's also trying to do something positive in the world. So, um, I so want to make sure we can let you go, but where can people find you, David, if they want to uh, get more of your goodness? There's so much we can learn from you. Uh, my pleasure. If you're interested more on this book, Fanocracy, we have a great website at fanocracy.com. 
Um, and um, on the social networks, most of them, I am DM Scott. Julia, this has been great. I, um, I'm really um, um, happy to see what you've been doing for so many women entrepreneurs. It's truly needed. Thank you. You, you actually implement many of the ideas that I talk about in my books. So it's always a wonder to see when um, somebody is helping other people, but in many cases, not, I'm not saying you got the ideas from the book, but you're using the ideas that I talk about, which is fabulous. Well, thank you. I mean, I've, I've learned so much from your books and from hearing you speak in person. And I always love teaching newsjacking and now fanocracy. Thank so you. keep the great ideas coming so we can keep implementing them in our community. And, you know, so delighted to have had you on. It's always great to see you. And thank please, you. Give Reiko my best, too. I don't know her, but I'm so impressed with her from the book. And is she in, in her medical career? Where is she, she uh, yeah, she's actually an emergency um, doctor at Boston Medical Center. Um, she, start, she started almost exactly a year ago. So she wow. spent her entire... Just in time for the pandemic. I Whoa. know. She <laughs> spent her entire medical career in the thick of COVID. And uh, she does work with COVID patients. Um, Boston wow. Medical Center is the... Um, the, uh, the safety net hospital for the city of Boston, which means that they take anybody. You don't have to have insurance. Um, many of their many of their patients are, are homeless people. So that's um, amazing. Uh, well, you know what I'm going to say next. Really I want I want to send her some chocolate from Melen Jardin is our community member who has the oh, chocolate company. Awesome. So I'll follow up with you so I can okay. find out where to send that. That'd and you great. aced your first Instagram live. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> You're good to go. <laughs> I feel good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, David, great to see you. Have Take an awesome care, day. Julia. Thanks All for joining right, us. If you just exit out, I'm going to stay on. Will do. Thanks. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks again. Um, there is so much we can learn from Fanocracy, which has, again, a lot of concrete examples about businesses, everything from a small business to, you know, up to Duracell of how they've implemented this idea of not selling, doing this hard sell for customers, but how do you make them love you and want to follow you around the world the way deadheads, right, want to follow the Grateful Dead. And uh, the very first time I heard David Meerman Scott speak, he spoke about his passion for the Grateful Dead. It helped me to remember him, right? I was like, oh, yeah, that's that Grateful Dead guy. And he made some great comparisons with business. Because if you've ever met a Grateful Dead fan, you know they will drop anything to go see a concert, or they would back when you could do that. And that's how we want our customers to feel about us, right? We don't want it to be a pull. We don't want to feel like we're pulling people in. We want them to be seeking us out. And there are things you can do in your business that will make more people seeking you out and less of you feeling like you're pulling them in. All right. Thanks again, David, for the great Instagram Live. So good to see you all on here today. Hello, Clyde Lee. Hello, Ann Bachman. Hello, Swansky, Carol Skoda. Please join us again next week. Hello, Antonio. It's such a great turnout. Hi, Rabia. Um, if you missed the beginning, you can go back and watch this on Instagram TV and check out some of our prior episodes. I always bring on guests who can help you scale up your business. And sometimes we do live coaching. Look forward to seeing you back here on another one of these. Stay brave and go big.